So, psych people, um, pleasure talking to a few of you from my 2RW earlier. Uh, I will uh, keep doing those. Um, I know that you have a lot of conflicts with those because I know there are certain classes where it's pretty important to have, um, stripping down, sorry, where it's, where it's uh, more important to have like that live session, i.e. math and my, you know, amazing videos can kind of carry themselves, but it is fun to, if you, if you do get an email that says, hey, we're going to meet at 10 o'clock, feel free to chime in uh, during that 10 o'clock Zoom meeting um, and uh, it'd be good to see you or hear from you. And I'll try and get those out. Sorry, got to wipe my face. But anyway, we've been doing a bunch of biology and uh, the biology is important. And it's not like we've been doing crazy biology. We've been doing pretty normal basic biology those of you who uh, feel like taking the ap test that the, a lot of that biology is a pretty good start certainly the hemispheres and the lobes of the brain is very important to the ap test um, the structure of a neuron is very important to the ap test uh, the all of the neurotransmitters and what the neurotransmitters do is very important to the ap test and that's just good general information. Uh, if you get to college, you'll be doing a lot more with the, the biology stuff. Anyway, we are, we did some sleep uh, and we worked with delta waves and alpha waves. And so you, you now understand those stages of sleep, hopefully, and you have uh, an idea, terms like the circadian cycle, uh, sleep spindles, these types of things that occur in the brain when you go to sleep. Uh, the question of dreams, uh, that's, that's something that if you just feel like, you know, when we get back to school, throwing, kids love to, in the first semester, love to throw dreams at me and have me uh, interpret dreams through a, uh, through the lens of Carl Jung and Sigmund Freud. That's something that I've spent a lot of time doing dreams and symbols so you know feel free if you've got one that that's actually a really cool thing you could be doing over the break is just kind of keeping a sleep and dreaming uh journal at night and um you kind of you write down what that dream meant uh so for example last night this is last few nights i've been having like animal dreams um now, one of those, one of those particular dreams, um, is I, the, I had a pet tiger, which I know where that dream came from, but it was like a real heart, like I, the, the, the frustration within the dream was having, how do I pay to take care of this tiger? Okay. So, uh, I'm in actively trying to, and obviously that's a reference to this freaking Tiger King thing that that was timed perfectly for our COVID-19 shutdown. But so I've got that one I'm wrestling with. And then last night I have a dream that I have um, as a pet a peregrine falcon, which are those falcons that can dive at like 200 miles an hour. And this peregrine falcon, I was afraid to leave alone and it was really bonded with me for some reason so man i'm having weird animal dreams is the bottom line and i need to kind of take a look at why i'm having those weird animal dreams but that's sleep and dreaming is like crazy stuff and there's really good stuff with sleep and dreaming um you know the symbols of sleep and dreaming you know, there's there's two real theories on the symbols of sleep and dreaming. So there's the idea that um, the Freudian idea and, and obviously with sleep and dreaming, the Freudian idea is going to be a psychosexual motivation. The Freudian idea behind dreams is going to be primarily these the, they're going to be wish fulfillment based. OK, repressed wish fulfillment symbols 
That's what you're going to see from a Freudian dream interpretation. Freud considered the interpretation of dreams really important because Freud looked at sleep as our primary source of communication with the unconscious mind. Now you could get to the subconscious, the level just below consciousness, you could get to that level via things like free association, which is the whole lay down on the couch and say the first thing that comes to your mind. Uh, a Rorschach test is sort of a free association thing. You know, tell me what you see here. What's the first thing that comes to mind when you look at a Rorschach test? And of course, you know the the famous character from the Watchmen, Rorschach, who wears a, uh, a Rorschach mask, okay? So what do you see when you look at that? And that's, Freud believed that's how we can kind of tap into the, and he didn't use a lot of that. In fact, those come a little later, but we now, Neo-Freudians, use the Rorschach as a sort of a technique. But Freud's main technique was free association. When it comes to the dream, you know, Freud believed that the symbols within the dream were there to disguise the repressed and scary elements of the dream. So, you know, because he didn't want you, the, the subconscious and the unconscious don't want you to wake up. They want you to confront this. And Freud believed that the dream was a way by which we could confront things that were psychosexual in nature without traumatizing our conscious mind. So he had what was called the manifest content, which was the symbolic mean well the symbol symbols the symbols were the manifest content the latent content was what those symbols actually meant so as you can figure out as you can probably deduce with freud the uh the latent content is going to be sexual the manifest content is going are going to be symbols things like the sword the gun um, for the male phallus, uh, he considered the house a, um, a female reference. The, uh, you know, a lot of his stuff, you know, Freud had a lot of the return to the womb type symbolism that he felt like we were all trying to return to the womb, the safety of the womb. So things like warm, you know, a warm bath and any kind of warm, you know, like I, I know, For, look, Freud is, Freud is Freud. Um, take what, take what you can use from Freud. Uh, recognize Freud as an innovator. There, by the way, uh, I started watching yesterday the German Netflix series Freud, and it's actually really good. I'm, I'm not condoning it because, or recommending it because I think it's rated R. But it is really good. They do a good job. And, you know, I was telling my wife, the acting is much better than most of the Netflix acting things. But um, so anyway, Freud is Freud. And the symbols of Freud are going to be pretty straightforward. You know, things like swords and and uh, uh, crevasses, caves, houses the standard things that we would expect from Freud. Much more interesting to me when it comes to dream interpretation is uh, the work of Carl Jung, uh, which I did a tremendous amount of work with. Carl Jung, as you know, broke the conscious, uh, broke the mind down in, or the unconscious mind down into the collective unconscious and the personal unconscious. Now the collective unconscious, according to Jung, was comprised of universal archetypes that are energies that, well, 
they are, they're not symbols, but let's just call them symbols. They're energies that we convert to symbols is the best way for me to say that. So the archetypes of the unconscious are universal in mankind. The savior, the old Gandalf, like uh, let me get the Gandalf character, the old sage, you know, um, the uh, Christ Messiah character, you know, the Buddha, Muhammad, that Messiah character, um, all of the characters within the Lord of the Rings, you know, that the, the idea of crucifixion, the mother figure, all of these are, and, and by the way, they don't stop there. Those are just the prevailing archetypes in our in our unconscious. But Jung believed that every symbol in our in our mind when we slept was could be a universal archetype to mankind. And um, if the, for those of you who have um, who have sat in on my tattoo presentation, we talk about the symbols of the unconscious and they become symbols on the skin, okay? So for example, you know, the, the phoenix, well, that's the dead, you can't see anything. The, the phoenix, you know, the phoenix represents that, that sort of rising from, you know, the ashes, um, and, and rebirth. Rebirth is a big part of Carl Jung's stuff. So Carl Jung is a much more, uh, he, he doesn't, the psychosexual part for Jung isn't quite the same. And so his symbols are going to be symbols that aren't about wish fulfillment. Carl Jung's symbols in the dream are going to be about the self-actualization process. Carl Jung believed that we were trying from the time we were born to align the, the self, who we really are, with our ego consciousness. Okay? And that, that self and ego alignment was what Christ had. He he was an, he loved the 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 spirituality of of religion. Uh, you know, Jung absolutely loved it. It wasn't you know it's a questionable whether he was um, an atheist or wasn't an atheist. He really kind of he didn't talk about it much. But one thing he really did talk about was how important the symbols of our mythologies. And that's not to say that I'm not saying Christianity. Is um, is not a, you know is a myth in mythology in terms of it being make believe? No, he believed that those those stories were quintessential to our self actualizing and our realigning the self who we all really are with our ego, which is how we want to be perceived. So Jung believed, and Carl Jung is spelled J-U-N-G, Jung believed, and I'm going to give you a, um, a little something to kind of, uh, on the next article, I think I'm going to have you do something about dreams, because that's a cool article idea. So Jung believed that our whole process of dreaming, which he acknowledged was, you know, because he was with Freud for a very long time, he acknowledged that our entire process of dreaming is one in which we are confronting elements of our unconscious that are there to help us. And they are there to help us become a self-actualized, or he called it uh, individuation. But it's the same as Maslow's idea of self-actualization that process of self-individuation. That's what it was. And Jung believed that the idea of a crucifixion was very important for us in that we had to, we had to confront all of our weaknesses and we had to 
we had to see ourselves for who for who we really were and we had to build from there um lord of the rings is based on carl jung's ideas uh star wars was directly um based on carl jung's ideas he you know um george lucas uh sat down with joseph campbell who is one of the primary you know he's one of the, he's he's like second in the carl jung hierarchy of of symbols and lucas actually sat down with uh campbell and talked about archetypes of the collective unconscious so we have two different interpretation models for dreams you have that freudian wish fulfillment which is the you know you're running um through the woods the forest the forest being the unknown and there is a guy chasing you with a sword and you seek shelter in the cave and hide there. Well, the cave could represent the womb, the sword could represent the, you know, some form of psychosexuality, you know, and, you know, it's all that Freudian wish fulfillment stuff. Um, Jung, however, the, takes on a whole different it takes on a different meaning. Yes, the forest could represent the unknown, but the man with the sword could represent the darker side of our nature. Okay? And the the darker, more destructive side of our nature. And the cave could represent the 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 place of wisdom. Okay? Um, it, you know, the, there's a, uh, the, you could like, uh, the, the place of trial where you go, who was it in Lord of the Rings who has to go through the cave, like he has to go through this long cave of the dead and prove his worth. Um, you know, the trial, like these are the kinds of things that Jung would say. He would take that psychosexual stuff out and he would make it more about us becoming a, um, self-actualized you take a character like uh, Gollum and his and anybody who comes in contact with the ring and the breakdown of the psyche that's a classic Jungian take on the the development of the psyche you know, that this thing becomes this source of obsession and we lose all the other elements of our being that's what happened to Gollum. It's a very Jungian idea. So anyway, um, I'll give you a, 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 the article for this week. Let's make it about, um, about we'll make it about dreaming and uh, try to get some, try and, try and, try and get a, an article about Freud or Carl Jung, J-U-N-G. Try, try to get an article that deals with those or, you know, a lot of doctor, you know, a lot, a lot of behaviorists just believe that dreams are a means of sorting out the millions of stimuli uh, in the hippocampal region. You know, so the hippocampus, that, that short to long term memory component is really just taking these, these stimuli and just deciding what needs to be kept and what doesn't need to be kept. That's not, I, I believe that there's a lot of that going on, but I think that there's a lot of both going on. I think that the behaviorists are right. There's a lot of just purging the garbage that we don't need and the stuff we do need. But the, I believe that there's also, based on the visceral emotional content of many dreams and the very bizarre symbols of many dreams, you know, I've kind of come to the conclusion in my studies in this, that there is there is something more to the dream i do really see them as a door to the unconscious so try to find something whether it is the behaviorist uh take on dreaming uh, whether it's the jungian take collective unconscious archetypes or the freudian take the wish fulfillment 
and the the repressed sexual desire take. Try to find something that is uh, from one of them on your article for this week, and keep up keep up the good work. That we're going to be moving into drugs. Uh, maybe that didn't come out right, uh, but we're going to start talking about drugs. My next Wednesday or or Thursday's lecture will be an intro to drugs and you know drug what they do and how they work. Anyway, uh, love you all and. Um, Keep up the good work.